This is Counterpoint. NATO just celebrated its 70th anniversary, but certainly has seen better days. And where is that other special relationship going, the one between the EU and Israel? Israel is our ally. Israel, uh, it, we share common values and we share common interests. What we have to do in this new term, and the Commission should prioritize this, is deepen this mutually beneficial bilateral relationship with Israel. We have to talk about the Association Council and about an association agreement. These things have been on a table and they've been dormant for years. We at the American Jewish Committee have said for years to our friends here, if you want to get to a day of peace, focus today on the day after the day of peace. I think if the European Union is going to have any serious credibility in dealing with the peace process, it's going to have to show up front and early on a recognition of Israel's legitimate security challenges. That's the role that Europe can play, and I think that it's not fully exploited that role quite yet. Welcome to Counterpoint, recorded here in the studios of the European Parliament. It took only a little more than 2,000 years, but Greece, Cyprus and Israel have finally formed what can be considered a strategic alliance. And speaking of alliance, NATO just celebrated its 70th anniversary, but certainly has seen better days. And where is that other special relationship going, the one between the EU and Israel? With me to discuss these issues are Anna Michel Asimakopoulou, an MEP from Greece, and our very own David Harris, the CEO of AJC. Welcome both to you in the studio. Thank Let you. me turn to you, perhaps, first, Anna Michel. Just last week, uh, you spoke in the plenary debate um, following the uh, court decision ruling on labeling of settlement goods. Mm -hmm. What was your main message to your colleagues and the European Commission? Well, let's just say that my main message was that we're not deaf and we're not blind and we shouldn't be mute. I mean, we're not deaf in the sense that the EU has a certain position on, on Israel, and we've heard this being reiterated many, many times. Mogherini reiterated it in the plenary. But I visited Israel recently, as you know, and we're not blind. We can see that Israel has legitimate security concerns, and this has to be recognized. But mostly what I try to say is that the European Union can no longer be mute. What we have to do is be more vocal about Israel's security concerns. And what we have to do in this new term, and the Commission should prioritize this, is deepen this mutually beneficial bilateral relationship with Israel. Israel is our ally. Israel, uh, uh, it, we share common values and we share common interests. And what we should do is move forward with a, a specific agenda of deepening our relationship. We have to talk about the Association Council and about an association agreement. These things have been on a table and they've been dormant for years and it's time to move f towards a deeper relationship. It's in our mutual interest. Right. David, you've been coming to Brussels for many, many years. Uh, you are here now right after only a few days into the new commission. You've had a number of meetings with commissioners and EU officials. What is your feeling about the future of EU-Israel relations under this new leadership? So first of all, let me pick up where Anna Michel left off. I think if the European Union is going to have any serious credibility in dealing with the peace process between Israel and the Palestinians, it's going to have to show up front and early on a recognition of Israel's legitimate security challenges. And I completely agree with Anna Michel that there's not yet that full appreciation and understanding. And that's why we at the American Jewish Committee have said for years to our friends here, if you want to get to a day of peace, focus today on the day after the day of peace. Right. Because Israel is going to be asked to take risks that few countries on earth have been asked to take, especially those who've been victorious in war, wars of self-defense. So think now about how you can assure Israel that its legitimate security needs will be taken into account, not only leading up to, but following any peace agreement. That's the role that Europe can play. And I think that it's not fully exploited that role quite yet. And I think Anna Michel tried to make that point, and I hope we'll make it again um, and again. As for the new leadership here, we came to Brussels precisely in the first week in order to try and 
meet with and get a better understanding of, of the nature of this leadership mm -hmm. and how it may contrast with the last five years. It's still early to make uh, any conclusions, but let me, let me start on a hopeful note. We hope there'll be the opportunity for a serious engagement uh, for issues of concern to us. We are Europeanists, we are transatlanticists, we are friends of Israel, uh, and we also have the concern about rising anti-Semitism here in Europe and around the world. To the extent that we have interlocutors in the new leadership, uh, we'll look forward to a productive uh, relationship. Right. Now, as we just discussed, we would like to see a stronger relationship between EU and Israel. Two countries in the EU have done that step uh, to a large degree. Cyprus, Greece and Israel have formed a, a, real, a real new um, transformative mm -hmm. uh, alliance. Um, David, maybe if you can talk a little bit about the, the role that, that actually AJC and, and yourself has played in this uh, drama. Now here I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say I, I, I could spend the next few hours. I won't. We don't have that much time. Uh, but nearly 40 years ago, we were struck by the anomaly that the three democratic anchors of the Eastern Med, who should have been the best of friends and partners, were actually estranged from one another. I mean, here was Israel, a democratic country. Here were Greece and Cyprus, democratic countries. And yet Greece did not have full de jure diplomatic relations with Israel in the 1980s. And Cyprus touted its role in the non-aligned movement, which was quite openly hostile to Israel. So we set about with our Hellenic American friends to try and help correct this anomaly. And it took a long time, but as you said, it took 2,000 years. In my case, it took 40. <laughs> so I missed the first 1,960 years. Um, but look today, we have a full-fledged strategic partnership in every um, meaning of the term among these three democratic countries anchoring the need for stability and security in a turbulent Eastern Med. And I think it augurs very well both for the three and potentially over time for its expansion. Anna Michel, as, as David explained, we had a long way to get get here. Um, now, finally, this relationship is there. Uh, it's, it's, it encompasses energy, but also military, strategic, economic That's issues. Important. Can you talk a little bit about perhaps how the perception also maybe of Israel may have changed in the general public in Greece? How are how people in Greece in general looking at this relatively new relationship? Right. Well, it's, it's relatively new, like David said, but it's moved forward with very specific steps. I mean, it was actually the father of our current prime minister, Mitsotakis, who recognized Israel for the first time. Right. Um, and then, then he had as minister of foreign affairs Adonis Samaras, who was the prime minister later, who was actually the one who did two important things. One, he made Holocaust denial part of the um, anti-racism law. And secondly, he took a very brave decision with respect to the Nazi party Golden Dawn, which resulted in that basically being annihilated politically and now being criminally prosecuted. Um, and the current prime minister has just announced that he's going to recognize the definition of anti-Semitism, which, which is a big thing. So our relationship is deepening um, culturally. It's deepening um, in terms of geopolitics, because we have common interests in the area with respect to energy needs. It's deepening with respect to security concerns. We can't ignore what's happening with Turkey right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, we're allies. Um, and generally, although unfortunately studies show that anti-Semitism is still prevalent in Greek society, I would say that overall the perception, the public perception of Israel has made leaps and bounds in the positive direction in the past years. And I think that if we project forward, I think that this will only become stronger looking at the geopolitics in the region and at issues like Turkey's foreign policy and the migration problem. Mm. And I would add, uh, Daniel, that as Turkey has become sort of more, more um, hostile, more and more Israelis are exploring Greece. 
So I think the numbers now are about half a million Israelis a year who are visiting Greece. Yes. And in the case of Cyprus, because Israel does not yet have civil marriage, <laughs> I don't know the number of Israelis, but there are many who come to Cyprus also to get married. Oh, right. And then, of course, have honeymoons. And I, for one, am increasingly finding it difficult to distinguish who are the Israelis and the Jews and who are the Cypriots and who are the Greeks. There is so much in common. That's true. And the more, the more the, the walls of separation crumble and the more people realize food, uh, feelings, uh, uh, music, culture, how much they have in common. Yes. It's striking how quickly this, this alienation is being overcome by a new kind of spirit of friendship. I'm not being Pollyannish. Mm -hmm. Um, it's happening, and I think it's all to the good for all three countries. It's amazing, and it's a, it's a role model. It's a model for how the relationship can be also transformed between perhaps the EU, the larger EU, and Israel one day. But you, you already addressed uh, Turkey, mm -hmm. um, and I would like to talk a little bit about this also within the context uh, you know, of, 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 of the NATO alliance, the 70th anniversary that we just celebrated. Um, Obviously, it has always been a difficult relationship between Greece and Turkey, but right. now with Turkish, Turkish attempts to interfere with gas exploration off the coast of Cyprus and everything, are you, are you sort of, until now, are you satisfied, let's put it this way, with the solidarity shown by the rest of the EU so far in this sort of Hellenic-Israeli struggle against uh, Turkish interference? No. Just to be honest, no. Um, and, and I was grateful to see that Israel yesterday acknowledged this, absurd, not just what's going on uh, in terms of uh, the illegal drilling, but um, this illegal and geographically absurd memorandum of understanding that was just signed with Libya that just ignores the existence of Greek islands <laughs> and ignores international law. And I was pleased to see that Israel reacted to that, acknowledging um, international law, basically. Right. So um, the European Union, I understand that, that they have a relationship with Turkey. I understand what's going on. I understand that we all wanted a long-term European prospect for Turkey, because that's in everybody's best interest. But at the moment, there needs to be uh, a much more a much stronger and more specific reaction to what's going on with Turkey. Our Prime Minister, Kyriakos Mitsotakis, raised that actually yesterday in London during the NATO talks. Um, and Turkey is using, uh, after what's, what's gone on in Syria, Turkey is using the migration situation as a, a, a blackmail tool. And Yes, we in Greece and some of the other countries that are bearing, let's say, the brunt of the burden uh, are more vocal about it. But this is not a Greek problem. If terrorists come into Greece, they're not going to stay in Greece. <laughs> they're going to move all over the world. Um, and this cannot be seen as a local issue. It's a European issue. And I do hope that our new commissioner, Margaritis Hinas, who happens to be Greek, and who has this portfolio will, will quickly treat it as such and that quickly the Europeans will find a solution based on unity and solidarity, which is what I expect from them. Well, they have set in motion or prepared yes. at least the possibility of targeted sanctions yes. against Turkish officials, etc., who are involved in these activities. Are you, are you confident these will be used? I just think it's time to Words are good, but actions are what's needed at the moment. Obviously, David, we, we have long observed the trajectory of uh, the Turkish president. It's, it's not just this issue, it's his fierce anti-Semitism, uh, not simply anti-Zionism, but real anti-Semitism. It's his uh, relationship with Russia, the purchase of Russian weapons, uh, and so forth, and so forth. It's a very difficult ally. Um, how do you see the situation from an American perspective? So, first of all, you know, I say, I say all this with regret, Daniel, because Turkey was once, could have been, should have been an important friend and ally. 
and in, in the last number of years that's been squandered. And, and I think the first principle today needs to be that bullies, and President Erdogan has become a bully, cannot be confronted by weakness or hesitation or mixed messaging. And I think the challenge for the European Union, and by the way, I would add for the United States, which has profound interests in the region, must be, to the extent possible, coordination between the two, to the extent that that's possible, and a firm stance which sends clear messages. And the clear messages must include uh, uh, a respect for the international law of the sea, even though Turkey itself is not a signatory, but nonetheless, uh, through customary law, um, that the violation of the territorial waters of others uh, will not be acceptable or tolerated. And by the way, I would add to what you said at the beginning, this is not just a Greek Cypriot Israeli problem. Speak to the Egyptians, for example, about their concerns. And the largest, most influential Arab country um, could easily enter this conversation uh, and, 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 and give its own list. So what, whether it's Turkey's attempts now to get closer to Iran, closer to Russia, uh, the suppression of the Kurds, the, the entry into the exclusive economic zones, the refusal to acknowledge the Armenian genocide, and the threat to those countries that do, or the use of the migrants, as Anna Michel said, yeah. as a, a tool of blackmail, of diplomatic blackmail, means that it must be met by a firm response. And any equivocation, uh, any, any sort of wobbly knees, will only encourage and empower the bully. At the end of the day, Europe, the 28 member states, the United States, and others in the region should be able to show a firmness and a strength which, which, which clearly sends a message to President Erdogan, you, you, you need to find a better, more cooperative, more law-abiding way of proceeding. Well, let's hope uh, that you will soon find this firm voice. Uh, it needs to. Thank you both for, for joining, joining us thank today. You. Thank you for watching and goodbye.